everyone. Today I'm gonna to be swatching for you some old watercolors that I had, and a few of these I've had since high school. That's why there are a couple of them are Grumbacher um, Academy, they're like basically student grade, and then the rest are Windsor and Newton professional grade, but these paints are over 20 years old. So I filmed the process and I just thought that you might like to see how 20 year old um, watercolor paints swatch out and if they keep their pigment and are still good to use. Well, let's start swatching and see. Okay, so this first swatch is the only Grumbacher Academy, so it's the only student grade paint and I can totally tell. It just doesn't move very well. It's very well pigmented for, um, well, I wouldn't say it's student grade, it's, it's mid-range. It's not the top of the line, but it's academy line. It's not labeled as fine art um, pigment. So this is the ultramarine blue, and as you can see, I don't know, I just don't like working with it, but it's, it's fine to, for the color. I mean, that's how ultramarine blue looks, and it's still really pigmented. It's still mixed up well in the tube and everything's great so there's the old the old uh, tube of it over 20 years old next up is cobalt blue by Windsor and Newton and I should just mention I never reach for any of these paints anymore I just wanted them swatched in my color cookbook um, but I never reach for them um, I just have other paints that I like better like my Schmincke and now my Daniel Smith I'm in love with those but these are still really good paints. As you can see, the pigment is still there. Um, well, you're about to see, as you're about to see. See, look at that, it's traveling nicely. Um, it's still mixed up fine in the tube, it wasn't leaking. You know, it was a bit gummed up at the, at the top, but they still move nicely. It's still a beautiful cobalt blue. And after 20 years, it's still just like when I first opened it. This next tube is Windsor Newton Olive Green. And as you can see, the color is still beautiful and luminous. Um, it doesn't travel very well, but I find that true of all Windsor and Newton. That's why I just, they're not my favorite. Um, but they are a good base color. If you're looking to do a good flat wash or something like that, and they are really, really good paints. People, lots of people love them. Um, so as you can see here, it's uh, it's a beautiful olive green color. So check this out. If this doesn't prove these paints are over 20 years old, $5.84 for a tube of, a uh, big tube of Windsor & Newton premium artist quality watercolors. Way back in the day, that's what they were. And also keep in mind that's Canadian dollars, which differs from, you know, United States or Australia or the UK pound. Um, but next here I'm going to swatch out Raw Sienna by Windsor Newton, which is a classic color. 
and I just find it, um, I don't know, meh. It's just meh for me, and it always has been. It, they haven't been my favorite, although they were the best paints I had growing up. They were artist quality, and they were the standard to live up to, but there's so many beautiful paints out today, like uh, Daniel Smith and Schmincke and Magella Mission, and they're all so different, so... Um, I still love the Windsor Newton Burnt Sienna, though, I have to say. But the raw sienna is a little, I don't know, it's a little dry. Maybe the paint, um, what's mixed up with the pigment is not so, um, it, maybe it's drying out a little bit. As you can see, it's kind of just... I don't know it's very flat it's not a juicy wash or anything um, so I'm not crazy about this one but the next one burnt sienna is um, is pretty good out of the tube but this raw sienna seems to be a little weird I don't know probably because it's 20 years old <laughs> So as you can see, for each of these swatches, I'm laying out a very large swatch and a big puddle of water. I'm wetting the paper first. And this one, as you can see, the binders and the oils kind of need a little mixing. Um, I could have mixed it a little more in the palette there, but I'm mixing it up on the paper here. Um, and they just don't, I don't know, they don't flow very well. I'm not really sure if that's down to age. But from what I remember about all the Windsor and Newton, I had a Cotman set too, and they just always never really flowed like other brands do, but they are top quality, don't get me wrong. Um, and there are some colors that, you know, in each brand that uh, are my favorites of each brand that you just can't get from another brand. Like they, the pigments they use um, differ slightly in the amounts. It's funny though, I'm remembering why I have these specific colors and just, you know, the odd tubes. And I remember it was for high school and uh, we were asked to get these, these certain basic colors. So if anyone's a newbie watching this and wondering what colors to get to start off as an artist, these are the colors that I would recommend. These are the basic colors in watercolor. Um, that you can mix um, other colors from. Of course, you need a red though. You need your primaries. Uh, cool blue, warm blue, cool and warm yellow, cool and warm red. And then these colors like the burnt sienna, raw sienna, and an olive green would be a great start. And a burnt umber would be good too if you're starting out. So I always do this, I always put the writing on at the end because I guess the paint's wet so I, you kind of have to do that. So I'm forcing it here though, I'm trying to finagle and move my arm <laughs> and try to write properly while all this, those huge swatches are totally wet and juicy. But I manage it. Well, there we are. I was very curious, and if you were too, now we know how 20-year-old watercolor tubes swatch out 20 years later. So if you enjoyed this video, drop me a like, subscribe, and have a great day, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I mean, thanks for swatching!